Hiya, Smirk here, and I'm here to talk to you about pizza. Pizza was first noticed in writing in 997 AD and was found primarily in Italy. Pizza was loved for years by many, conquering the world as we know it, existing in all seven continents until it finally went towards the one place no man has gone before. Hell. And who was the first pizza chain in hell? Was it a Little Caesars? No, it was Pizza Guest. Pizza Guest was developed by Bagheads and was released on January 21st, 2022 and is regularly priced at 5 US dollars. The game currently has 8 Steam supported reviews, with 4 of them being positive and 4 of them being negative. The 5th positive review doesn't count towards the total since it's key activated and it seems to be one of the developers who worked on the game. And that's fine. I don't think it's scandalous or anything since it doesn't count towards the total on Steam, and I'd hope they'd like their own game. With these 8 reviews in mind, the game currently has a 50% recommendation rate. It plays as a light-hearted 3D puzzler, action and adventure game with horrific and demonic undertones. It took me a little over 3 hours to beat this game, but that was partially my fault. The game is much shorter, probably about 2 hours of gameplay for someone's first guideless playthrough. On consecutive plays, I've beaten it in about 40 minutes. In this game, you play as a nameless character who I'll just refer to as Baghead, because, well, yeah. Baghead gets hungry one night, desires pizza, makes the phone call, and that's when their adventure begins. You see, down here in hell, it's not just as easy as ordering a pizza and enjoying your night. You have to sign for it, deal with the devil, thieves, terrible employees, and bad neighbors. You know, after saying all that, it actually kind of feels like this scenario isn't that exclusive to hell. The game has what I'd call six chapters, with most of them bringing their own unique twist on the core gameplay mechanic inside of Pizza Guest. The gameplay at large revolves around how Baghead interacts with items. You can pick up and hold up to four items in your inventory, and most of the gameplay is about what you do with these items. Sometimes you combine them, sometimes you throw them, sometimes you find them, and sometimes you have to avoid them. Because there are some action elements in this game, it's probably worth calling out that the game has an easy mode found in the options menu. By default, the game starts you off at normal, and there are some elements of gameplay that do become simpler if you choose to switch to easy. Something worth mentioning is that Baghead's apartment building does have a couple of different possible placements for things, so the items around your apartment aren't in the same place all the time. I thought that was a nifty thing to mention, especially if someone wanted to build a guide for this game. That's about all the foundational items I think I need to cover, so let's move on to what I liked about Pizza Guest. I think it might be easy to see that this game's strongest asset is its visual design. Everything from the scene banner, to the screenshots, to the trailer on the store page. Even the way the storytelling is elaborated on through its use of comic panels is consistent with the game's aesthetic. The thick line art style is one that I personally enjoy and can be seen in other games such as Codename Steam and the critically acclaimed Borderlands. The developer, Bagheads, is made up of two people who go by the Twitter handles Feed by Snail and Triticker. Hopefully I said that right. And while there's no direct credit to whom did the visual design, I'll just say it's both. All the assets are clean, the environment is thematically outstanding, the UI is simple yet informative, and I didn't encounter any significant bugs. All the assets are clean, the environment is thematically outstanding, the UI is simple yet informative, and I didn't encounter any significant visual bugs. When it comes to the overall storyboard, the story combined with the universe the game takes place in is brilliant. To expand on this a little more, this $5 game made a story out of a side quest in a character's life, presented a clear obstacle, and then introduced a handful more environments and characters, and made it a unique and memorable experience. The story progression in this game may leave you puzzled a little bit, as it did me between chapters 2 and 3, but the overall progress makes up an adventure that's befitting of the conditions our main character finds themselves in. The transition between chapters 2 and 3 was a little weird because I have no idea why the main character fell... asleep? And also... Where did the bathroom and kitchen go? They just vanished. Another thing that I found myself enjoying is just the game's overall attitude, which is mostly about how it handles humor and its inclusion of pop culture. There's obvious low-hanging fruit of the responses that you can choose from when Baghead interacts with others, as well as just some of the possessions in his home, like his body pillow, or this picture from the movie Cars, or even his willingness to make cereal with toilet water. There's several meme-like mentions in the game, including Pepe, hit markers, a picture of South Park, which I guess now means that South Park is canon in hell, and also some choice images of the world's best ad. Finally, most of the gameplay was well implemented. It's thematic and easy to understand and execute. I say most because there are things I didn't like, but I'm going to split them into the appropriate sections. 
The gameplay among the first three chapters was relatively straightforward. You essentially get asked to bring certain things to a place, and if you can read a bit in a bag head as a character, some of these things can be a little obvious or require just a little bit of looking around the apartment. The item hunt in the third chapter was a little challenging aside from a possible bug I'll cover later, but I didn't think any of it was unreasonable as I was able to get through everything without the provided guide. The fourth chapter is more on the contrary where you want to avoid items and navigate through a maze. All in all, aside from the bugs, the gameplay was highly enjoyable while remaining appropriate to the game's themes. Now that I've covered the things I liked a little more, let's move on to the things I liked a little less. So one of the pain points of my time while playing Pizza Guest that tore up my experience were some of the bugs that I encountered. There was a bug I ran into was a strange overlaid text problem, and I dealt with it for a little while, but it was resolved ultimately by just closing and reopening the game. Another time, specifically when I was searching for a very specific book on how to perform an exorcism, I tore apart the whole apartment looking for it, yet I couldn't find it. I'm convinced it just didn't spawn when it was supposed to. I took every movable object in my house and threw it near the front door to make sure I wasn't crazy. I found it almost immediately after trying again by restarting the chapter and continuing. Now, the last bug I ran into and my final point have to do with the game's final chapter, which could be a spoiler to some. If you don't want to be spoiled, head on over to the timestamp on the screen to skip on over to the recap and rating. Alright, that's about enough time, so let's carry on. Another bug I ran into was that the final boss would disappear when I died and restarted their fight. This happened after a few deaths, and if I killed myself by falling off the platform, she still wouldn't respawn. This did happen two separate times, so it's somewhat consistent, but since you can close and reload the game from your current chapter, it's overcomable. It's not the worst, but it's just another annoying thing to run into. The worst of these bugs is definitely the accusation that a key item didn't spawn for me. Lastly, the part of the gameplay that I hate is anything that involves throwing. Throwing items is pretty core to the gameplay's later levels, as it's Baghead's only way of dealing damage. Throwing is done with the right mouse button, and it's kind of a weak, limp kind of throw that typically sticks to the right hand side. This makes throwing some things harder than others, but this doesn't become noticeably more challenging until chapter 5, where you have to hit these elemental diamonds. First off, at first, I couldn't tell if I was supposed to run away from these diamonds or chase after them. Okay, so what am I doing? Oh, I'm chasing this guy. No, he's chasing me. But once I figured that out, you have to pick up items and throw it at them to damage them. There are several times where I've tried to throw my item at the enemy and it just kind of misses, even though it felt like it should hit based on my aim and the expected trajectory. So eventually I overcome these enemies because all the bosses in this game are well designed with learnable attack tactics, but when I got to the final boss, I really struggled with this area at first because I only threw items using the right mouse button as I had before. After a little over an hour of trying to beat this boss by throwing with the right mouse button, I gave up out of frustration and decided to try again at a later time. The next day I returned, I actually found that the left mouse button became another throw button. Now, this left mouse button is significantly more accurate. Items go farther and are thrown more aligned with where your crosshair should be. Not only that, but if you throw with the right mouse button, you throw the entire item stack. If you throw with the left mouse button and you have multiple, you throw one at a time. One of my biggest problems with this fight before knowing about the left mouse button was that the throwing ammunition was so scarce. But that's because I was throwing five stacks of plates instead of one at a time, artificially increasing the difficulty of this fight. But hey, I eventually did beat the final boss after the realization of using the left mouse button was had. The fight was over in no more than 10 minutes, whereas the night before I was fighting this boss for well over an hour. So the short of it is that I wish there was a way that the change in what the left mouse button does was conveyed. It'd also be cool if it could be implemented for the previous diamond fight because it is another combat-centric chapter. Alright, that's about all the ungoodening I feel the need to share, so let's move on to the recap and rating. When it comes to Pizza Guest's strengths, the game's biggest strength is its visual design. After that, the game's story and overall environment is brilliant, unique, and memorable. In addition, the game's attitude and how it executes humor and introduces some pop culture references make the game relatable and easy to enjoy. 
Lastly, over two-thirds of the gameplay was solid, enjoyable, and thematic. When we consider Pizza Guest's weaknesses, I encountered several bugs that required a reload, with one of them being a huge potential time sink. Other than that, the gameplay mechanic of throwing being your main attack source is a bit awkward since items don't always follow the trajectory you expect. This is semi-repeated in the last chapter of the game, where the left mouse button suddenly becomes a more reliable throw action in addition to it remaining as the interaction button without the game indicating this change. All in all, I can say that I recommend Pizza Guest, and as far as a numerical score would go, I'd give it a 6 out of 10. It's closer to a 7 than a 5. The price of the game combined with the experience was overall positive, minus the misunderstanding in the game's final chapter. Personally, I'd love to see more from this universe and think that this game is a unique slice in the greater pie that is Steam. I tried to think about why this game's acceptance rate was so low, and the only thing I could think of is how the game is described on the store Steam page. I feel like it has to do with how little the store page conveys the intended gameplay experience, as it's super bare bones, and the trailer itself doesn't really talk about what to expect from the game at all. You can see this reflected in some of the current negative reviews, since they're mostly centered around the gameplay mechanic. So, in my opinion, the store page could use some touching up to set players' expectations. As a side note, I'm super curious on how to get the hentai and ending B achievements. I have not a single clue on what I could do differently, but would love to try and 100% this game. I feel like Rambo is just completing the game without dying on the normal difficulty, but I'm not good enough at the game to do that yet. I did try, though. Alrighty, that's all I've got. Like the video if you liked the video, comment your thoughts, and subscribe if you want to see more of my future content. Feel free to slap that bell's thick ass if you want to receive notifications for future videos. Hey, ladies! Which one of you lucky girls gets a ride with me tonight? Dream on, dweeb!